On today's show, President Biden puts America back on track to lowering its emissions, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord and preparing to boost renewable energy support. BP-backed Israeli firm StoreDot delivers the first commercial engineering samples of its revolutionary ultra-fast rechargeable battery and Rivian brings in a massive 2.65 billion US dollars in its latest investment round. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and energy. We've got a lot of stories to cover today, so let's get on with it. We start today's show with the inauguration of US President Joseph R. Biden and Vice President Kamala D. Harris, which took place on Wednesday in the US this week. Within hours of the inauguration ceremony, President Biden signed two new executive orders designed to put the US back on track towards a cleaner, greener future, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord and cancelling permits for the controversial Keystone XL pipeline with immediate effect. President Biden's EPA is already working to overthrow Trump EPA policies that had either removed or reduced Obama-era emissions targets and environmental protections. President Biden's administration has also announced plans to re-establish a social cost of emissions schedule and is expected to work through its election promises towards clean energy and electric vehicles in the coming weeks and months. Mercedes-Benz revealed the latest of its EQ family of electric vehicles this week, the EQA Compact Crossover. Essentially an all-electric version of the Mercedes-Benz GLA, the EQA is smaller than the EQC SUV, but doesn't manage to achieve all that much better range. Mercedes-Benz quotes an NEDC cycle range of 486 kilometers, 301 miles, from a usable 66.5 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Given how over-optimistic the NEDC cycle is, we'd expect far less in the real world, a fact backed up by the WLTP range rating of 426 kilometers, or 265 miles. The sprint time is is just under nine seconds, and prices have been set at around 47,500 euro in Germany. However, don't expect this to go on sale in North America. A week after it pulled the covers off its Altium-based commercial delivery system Brightdrop, General Motors has confirmed a one billion Canadian dollar investment into its CAMI production facilities in Ingersoll, Ontario, specifically to ready it to produce the Brightdrop EV600 commercial vehicle. The investment is the latest in a slew of electric vehicle and renewable energy projects being planned or carried out by GM, including at its Oshawa assembly facility. The retooling will take place in the coming months, with GM aiming to produce its first EV600s for customers, including FedEx, by the end of this year. The EV600's sibling product, the EP1 electric pallet truck, will begin sales in the next few months. The electric vehicle world is full of companies and research institutions promising major breakthroughs in its battery technologies, from solid-state batteries through to cobalt-free cells and even some more exotic cell chemistries, there's a lot of money being invested in the battery industry right now. Most of these breakthrough cells never actually make it into production, but Israeli firm StoreDot has just announced that it's delivered its first engineering samples to customers in both the tech and auto industries. StoreDot, backed by BP, has long been promising a cell with a five-minute recharge time. Last year, it demonstrated a real-world application of that technology in an electric scooter fitted with prototype cells. While engineering samples show it's closer than ever before to production, it will still still be a number of years before we know for sure if StoreDot has a viable commercial future. Porsche officially began sales of its new entry-level Taycan electric car this week. Coming in below the previously launched Taycan 4S, the new model, simply called the Porsche Taycan, is a rear-wheel drive variant which offers up to 300 kilowatts at the wheels in standard mode and up to 350 kilowatts in the temporary boost mode. As a side, the video you're seeing right now is of its more powerful siblings because no B-roll exists of the Porsche Taycan. 
The Porsche Taycan will be available with a choice of 79.2 kilowatt hour pack for up to 431 kilometers, 268 miles of range, or 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack for 481 kilometers or 299 miles of range, both on the WLTP test cycle. It will cost from 81,250 US dollars, including destination charges, but excluding any tax incentives or credits in the US. As we all know, Tesla is blisteringly quick in its innovation cycle, and just a few months after it held its important battery day, it's already well into the hiring process for staff to work on the new 4680 battery production line. This week, Tesla released a short video on its YouTube channel showcasing that battery production line in operation. It highlights the sheer size, speed, and efficiency of the mainly automated line. With Tesla now confirmed to be producing structural battery packs for Model Y, a few sneak photos have been flying around online this week that we haven't been able to get Wright's clearance to show, I suspect it's only a matter of months before we see Model 3 and Model Y prices drop around the world as these new cells are implemented. Oh, and in case you were interested, the music playing on Tesla's video is the 1960 B-side to Don Hinton's Joanne single. It's called Honey Bee. General Motors, its self-driving subsidiary Cruise, and Microsoft have announced a new partnership this week to accelerate the commercialization of self-driving vehicles. In addition to its fleet of prototype self-driving Chevrolet Volt EVs, Cruise is readying its first production vehicle for market in the form of the Cruise Origin, a box-shaped, fully autonomous passenger pod vehicle powered by GM's Ultium battery pack and drivetrain. As part of the new partnership, Cruise will make use of Microsoft's Azure Cloud and Edge server platforms. At the same time as announcing the new partnership, Cruise also confirmed that Microsoft has joined General Motors, Honda, and other big name investors in a brand new equity investment round worth a total of 2 billion US dollars. This pushes Cruise's total valuation to 30 billion. The Cruise Origin is expected to enter into production this year. A week after the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration called on Tesla to begin a recall campaign to address the failing eMMC memory chips inside early Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X MCU touchscreen systems, Tesla has caused a little bit of a stir among some Tesla fans online. Instead of simply offering a recall program and replacing faulty units with refurbished or remanufactured as new ones, Tesla is actually offering customers of older vehicles the chance to upgrade their car's MCU to a newer unit with a lot more functionality, for a total of $1,500 US dollars. That's better than the $2,500 it used to charge. It's not clear how many owners are paying for the upgrade, or indeed if Tesla is urging customers to upgrade rather than switch out. But according to some of my contacts, it appears some owners have managed to get a free MCU replacement rather than choose to upgrade. Sadly, though, it's hard to get to the bottom of this story, especially without a Tesla media department to talk to for regarding clarification. Rivian may be heading towards series production of its R1T and R1S, and already has production validation vehicles rolling off its normal Illinois production line, but this week it announced another successful funding round. Coming in hot off the heels of a July 2020 funding round, which netted it a total of two and a half billion US dollars, this new round, worth 2.65 billion, includes sizable investment from T. Rowe Price Associates, a well-known backer of Tesla during its early days. T. Rowe Price is joined by Fidelity Management and Research Company, Amazon's Climate Pledge Fund, and D1 Capital Partners, among others. This latest round of funding means that Rivian has raised more than $8 billion in capital in just two years and should fund the company well beyond the start of series production and vehicle deliveries. Ford has confirmed this week that it's had to push back North American customer deliveries of its Mustang Mark E electric SUV in order to carry out, quote, additional quality checks on several hundred Mustang Mark E models built before dealer shipments started last month. Several hundred customers in North America have consequently had their deliveries pushed back while those checks are carried out. But just as soon as we heard of the problems, it appears that Ford may have already solved them and is back on track, with several owners on the Mark E forums now noticing that having had their car's deliveries pushed back by Ford, they're now having them brought back forwards again. 
If you've got a Mark E or you're waiting to get one, I'd love to know your experiences in the comments below. And finally, over the last few years, autonomous air taxi services have been promised by an increasingly large number of startups, many of them with sizable investment behind them. But to date, none have actually made that final step towards commercial reality. But this week, German based Volocopter announced that it has taken one more step towards that and has begun the official certification processes required in both the European Union and the United States in order to be allowed to operate as a commercial air carrier. The process is a lengthy one, so we shouldn't expect to see volocopters buzzing around major cities this year or next. But as the world turns a page and starts to take our transportation emissions seriously, I think it's pretty conceivable that air taxis will be a common sight in city skies within the next 10 years or so. And on that note, we are done for today. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. They make it super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand weed itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable energy that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time! <music>